What's up guys, Mike the Coder here. Today we are gonna go over the next problem of coding interview patterns. So the next problems of the next patterns that we see most in coding interviews is uh, breadth first search binary tree traversal, okay? So this is essentially the same thing as level order traversal for binary search trees. So the idea, remember in graphs for binary search trees, for graphs, right, when you do a, a breadth first search traversal, you just go over the surrounding nodes first, and then you go to its surrounding nodes and so on and so forth until you visited all the nodes, right? Well, since for binary search trees, it is the exact same thing, but um, it's easier because we only have two children for every node, right? So when you do a breadth first search on a binary search tree, you're really just going over every single level. So let's say we have this one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, right? So this, this binary search tree right here. Well, if I'm going um, breadth first search here, we're really, what we're really doing is we're going through every single level. So we're gonna go to one, then we're gonna go to two, three, right? So each level here from left to right from every level. So one, one's level is just by itself, right? There's no nodes from left to right. So it's just one. Then we go to the next level right here, which is uh, two and three. So that's that's the next level, so two, three. And then the next level would be four and five, right? Four, five, and that'll be the last level right there. Now, if there were more nodes here, let's say there was six and seven, we would print out four, five, six, and seven because that's the whole level of the binary search tree. And as we could see here on Geeks for Geeks, uh, the output would be one, two, three, and then four, five. So there's many ways to implement this. Um, Oh yeah, we could go over another example here actually. So look at this 20, it would just be level order. So it'd be 20, then 8, 22, right? So we've had first level 20, 8, 22, and then we have four, then 12, right? And then we have 10 and 14. So each level, so as we, we're going level, so we're going 20, 8, 22, 4, 12, 10, 14, right? Every level from left to right, that's what we're doing. Okay, so um, there's many ways to do this. One way is to use recursion, and I find recursion more difficult here because you're essentially using um, run depth first search while you're do doing breadth first search basically. And you're gonna use recursion and maintain the current height. And then every you're gonna print nodes for every height from the root and match if the current height is equal to the height of the current iteration and then print the data. So this is kind of very hard to grasp, but I'll bear with me, right? Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop from the current height to the height of the tree. So we're one to H. And then we're going to run depth first search, right? So basically we're gonna keep going down all the way down to every single node. So we're gonna pick a node and we're gonna go all the way down, all the way down to that specific node while we're maintaining the height of the current node. Um, if it's null, we're just gonna return, right? Uh, if the level is one, so once we reach one, uh, we just print the data, otherwise, if the level is greater than one, we recursively call on the left side and then subtract the level minus one and recursively call on the right side with level minus one. So this is kind of hard to understand, but bear with me, right? So here's how you do it, okay? So we have a level order, right? So here we have a node called print level order, okay? Which is a, a function to print the level order of it. This is our breath first search function, right? And then we're gonna, first we have to get the height of the tree of the root, which is you have to call another function to do that, which is a pain in the butt. So here we're basically keep going down and get the height of the binary search tree over and over again um, until we get the height of the tree, right? So this is, this is kind of hard to understand, but getting the height of the tree is just literally, you just keep going down every single time from the left side and the right side. And every time you go down, um, we're gonna increment one on the height for the left side and the right side. Okay, that's that's what getting the height of a binary search tree is like, okay? So yeah, if the left's height is greater than the right's height, right, we just add one. Otherwise, we we add one on the right height, right? So that's that's all we do here. Um, yeah, I, they didn't, re yeah, okay, yeah, that's basically it. And we hit the root, we're just gonna return, return zero. So this is like getting the height of the tree. So once we get the height of the tree, we're gonna loop through from one to the height of the tree, and we're just gonna print every single level from starting from the root and i, okay? So i is like the current level. So here we have another function called print current level, and what we're doing is that 
we're just going to recursively decrease the level over and over again until we reach a level of one. And then that means we print the roots data. Okay, so if I were to draw this out, this is kind of a pain in the butt, right? So the, the recursive option is really difficult to implement. I personally wouldn't even use this actually, but I feel like it's good to know because if you understand the recursive process, um, it's just easier to, I don't know, it's just good to know. It's good to know in case of like the interviewer just wants you to do a recursive process and a iter iterative process. So let me just quickly get my stuff in it. So guys, going back to the height of the tree. So if we go back to right here, um, the code of the height, getting the height of the binary search tree, right, is just this one. Um, right here, right? So it's just going, getting the left side and the right side, and then whichever height is larger, they're gonna add one and recursively call this. So basically what they're doing is that if we're over here, and basically the height starts at zero, right? No, actually, there's no height in the beginning, but we're gonna recursively call on the left side, so we're gonna go this side, right? This side, left side. And then we're gonna go recursive call again, so we're gonna go left side again, here. And then once we're here, right, we're gonna recursive call again, and then we're gonna hit null, so that's gonna return zero on the left. And then it's also gonna return zero on the right. And then we get the maximum, whichever side is max, uh, we're gonna add one to it. So this, which is a larger, left side is larger than right, right side is larger than left, otherwise we're gonna add one to the right side. So return one, so this is gonna plus one for one height, right? Right, it's being backwards. So it's gonna plus one for height for this side. And then we're gonna recursively call on the right side and it goes to the left child again. So we go to the right side and then we're gonna go on the left side. And here it's gonna return zero on the left. There's nothing zero on the right and whichever is maximum, it's gonna plus one. So zero plus one will be plus one here. And then it goes on the right side, recursively on the right side. Uh, right side, zero is null, right? So return zero. And right side is going to be zero also, so return zero. And then on the left side, whichever the larger on the left and the right will be zero. Max is left and right, zero, zero, and then plus one. We have plus one here. And then we take the maximum on the left child here, which is plus one, and the maximum on the right child here, plus one. So whichever is larger, since uh, there's left side is not larger than the right side, we're going to go to this return statement. So we're going to do right side plus one. So plus one, plus one would be two. So this is gonna come up to here, two plus one, right? And then now we're gonna check again, whichever is larger on the left and right. So left is not larger than right. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna return right plus one. So this is gonna plus three. So two plus one would be three. So that's be here. And that's the left side. So we're out down that there. And now we're gonna recursively call on the right side. So we got the left height now. Now we're gonna recursively call on the right side. So we're on the right side. Here, left is null, so return zero. Right is null, return zero. So we're gonna plus one here, we're gonna plus one here. So now we have left three and one, and whichever is larger, um, three is larger than one. So we have that, and then we're just gonna add one. So left side three plus one would be four. So in the end, we our height is four. So that's, that's just going through getting the height of the binary search tree. So now we have the height of the binary search tree. Now we have to go to the level order traversal. So now this is the time where we start looping through. So now that we got the height of the binary search tree, that's this part of printing level order. So that's this part. Now we're gonna loop from one to the height. So remember the height here is four. So we have four. And we're gonna loop from one to four, okay? We loop from one to four. All right, so we're gonna pass in one here, okay? And then um, if the level is one, we're going to print out the roots data. So in this case, uh, the first level is one, right? So that's 20. So since the level is equal to one, we're just going to return uh, 20. So here, answer would be 20 here. So we print out that. Now I is going to equal to two, right? Because we started at one. So now I is going to equal to two. So now I is equal to two. We're going to call level here with uh, two minus one. 
on the left side, and we're going to call level on root uh, 2 minus 1 on the right side. So now it's going to do go on the left side. So this is the left side. All right, we're going to go on the left side. 2 minus 1 would be 1. So we go here. Root is equal to null, but uh, it's not equal to null, right? Level is equal to 1. So we're going to return, uh, we're going to print out this root's data. So this root's data is 8. So we're going to print out 8. Okay. Now that we're all done with the left side, we're going to go on the right side. So we're going to go on the right side here. And we're at 22, right? 22. So now we pass in the level. Our current level i is equal to 2. So we're going to do 2 minus 1 would be 1. So that, that comes back to the top. Now, if level is equal to 1, we print out the data. So our current data at this side on the right side is 22. So we're going to print out 22 here. So you guys could see the, what is basically going on. We're basically printing out things level by level. Okay? So now we're going to have i equals 3. So i was equal to 1, right? Then it became i equal to 2. Now i is going to equal to 3. So now that i equals a 3, we're going to go down here. So we're going to go here. Okay? So we pass in 3 and in here, and then we're going to do a uh, recursively call on the left side, roots left, uh, with 3 minus 1, so it's going to be 2, right? So we're going to go left side, uh, pass in 2 here, right? And then we're also going to call right side, pass in 2, right? Because i equals a 3, so we pass in level minus 1. 3 minus 1 is 2, so we go on the left side here. So left side 2, uh, left level is still not equal to 1 yet so we're going to go down here and we're going to pass in a uh, left print current level left on the current level so our current level is 2 right now because we just called it so we're going to do 2 we're going to call level left 2 minus 1 which will be 1 so we're going to call left 1 and we're going to call uh, right 1 okay so we're going to call right 1 all right, so now we're down to a level of 1. Okay, so now we're back up to here. We went left again, 1. And because level is equal to 1, we're just going to print the data, which is just 4. So we print out 4 here. So that's this part, okay? And now that's done, we go back to here. So when we're on the right side of 1, so 1 gets passed up here. Level is equal to 1 now. So we're going to print the current data, and our current data is 12. So we're going to print 12 here. So I hope you guys are seeing what's going on here. Seeing what is going on with each of these level traversals. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah. And I think that's that. So we have now 28, 22, 4, and 12. Okay. So now I is going to equal to 4. So, right, remember we looped from 1 to 4. So now we're finally on I equal to 4. So since now I equals to 4 now, we're going to get rid of this side. So let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this, get rid of this, and get rid of this. So i is equal to 4, and 4 goes back up here. So we're going to call, um, 4 is greater than 1, right? So we're going to go on the left side with uh, level minus 1. So 4 minus 1 is 3, so we're going to call left side 4 minus 1, which is 3. And then we're going to call right side 4 minus 1, which is 3. So now we're on this side. Okay, so... So we're calling left on three, so we're gonna go back to the top. So print current level left on three. Now that we're at three, um, three is still greater than one, right? We're not at one yet, so three is greater than one, so we're gonna recursively call on the left side on level three minus one. So right now it's three, so we're gonna call left on two. And then we're gonna call right on two, okay? So now you see that. So now we have left on two, right on two. Okay. So now we go back up to here, and then um, left is going to be, uh, we're printing current level left two. So two is still greater than one, so we're going to call level two minus one. So this is going to be left two minus one, which is one. And then right would be two minus one, which is uh, one. Okay. So we're at level one and level right one. So now we're at one. We're just going to print the data, which is four. No, oh, actually, hold up. I think, um, did I mis miscalculate this? Went to the left one, four. Oh, okay. Left one. Okay, so now we're at left one, right? Um, now, left is one, but I think when we're going down left again, there's nothing here. 
This level has nothing here, right? Because we went, okay, we went left. Uh, see, okay, this, I'll show it this way. We went left one and we went right one. This is much easier to see and think about. So we went left one, right one. So we went left one and right one, and now we go back to the top. And now root is equal to null because there's no nodes on here. So we just return. So left one is null, so there's do nothing. Right one is null, so we do nothing. So here at this point, it just returns. So let's just like get rid of this. So this is like gone. Okay, so that was left two. Now we're gonna go right two, right? So we're now right two. Uh, two is greater than one, so we're gonna pass in level two minus one, so it would be one. So left two minus one would be one. And then right two is gonna be passing here, and then level is two, so two minus one would be one, so here, right one. So now we have left one and right one. Um, yeah, so now left one, one, right. So now we go back to the top, level is equal to one, so we're gonna print the current data, and our current data is 10 here on the left, so we're gonna print out 10, so it should be 10 on the bottom here, 10. And then, um, yeah, we go back to the top, we're gonna go right one, and now root level is equal to one, so we're gonna print the current data, and the current data is 14, so we're just gonna print out 14 here. So this would be our output. So I hope you guys understand what our output here is. So let's just, I'm just gonna make sure we've got our output here. You guys see our output. Oh, I think I get like a good rectangle here. So we have, I'm just gonna make sure you guys see this. So this is our output. We have 28, 22, 4, 12, 10, 14. So and that matches exactly the level order, right? 20, right? 20, 20, 8, 22, right? 8, 22, this level is 822. 412 is this level, 412, which is right here. And then we have 1014 on the last level, which is 1014. So yeah, each of these are di different levels and our output is correct. So yeah, that's how you do it with uh, recursively. This is a pain in the butt. Um, the easier way to do this is actually with iteratively, iteratively, okay? So that was breadth first search recursively using depth first search to traverse, to get the height, and then using breath first search. So, so there, yeah, that was a, that was a one hell of a trying to get level order. I apologize for that. That was very difficult. But yeah, well, now we're gonna do the the next part, which is actually doing it with um, using a queue, which is iteratively, and it's way easier. Okay, I promise you, this is way easier. Okay, guys, now we're gonna do this with a queue, which is iteratively, and this is so much easier to do. Um, yeah, I don't know why we didn't do this earlier, but this is legit legitimately so easy to do. Okay, so let's go back to the original picture. Let's actually just take this picture because we don't there's no need to um, make this so difficult. Let's take this picture and okay, so we're at this tree, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna call. Um, Breath for a search, which is using a queue, and this is so much easier. You you understand why it's so easy, so much easier. So, um, if you think about a queue, it's just like a line, right? It's a line of people, like a queue. When you're waiting at like a grocery store, it's a line. So when when you're waiting at a line, whichever goes first, um, first in, first out, right? So you basically go in the first line, and then um, you repeat until the queue becomes empty. So yeah, it's it's not that difficult. Let's let I'll explain how to do this. Okay, so basically we have a queue waiting in line. We're gonna add the root onto it. Um, if the queue is not empty, we're gonna get the first value of the the node that we're at, and we're gonna print it out, and then we're gonna pop it. All right, and then once we pop it, we're gonna go on the left child and push this onto the queue, and then we're gonna push the right value on the queue. So this is this is really not that difficult. So. So let's say we have this this tree, right? One, two, three, four, five. So right now the queue is empty. So for the queue, I'll just make sure it's like a line, okay? So this is our queue, a line. So the queue is empty, so we're gonna first push the root, which is our starting node of one. So now it's on here, okay? So that's this part. We push the root onto it here. Now, now is the queue empty? No, it's not. So we're gonna get the front value. So what is the front value of 
this tree, it's one. So we get this one. So we have the value one now, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna print it. Oh yeah, we're gonna print it and then remove it. So we have this value, we print it, we're gonna print one, remove it, remove it, so now it's gone. So the one value is now gone. All right, um, now we're gonna push the left side of the queue and then we're gonna push the right side of the queue. So the left side is two and three, so we're gonna add two first and then we're gonna add three, okay? So now we're at two and three. Now, is the queue empty? It's not. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the first value on the front. So we're gonna remove two, okay? So now we're at where we remove two and we're gonna print it out. So we're gonna print out two. So we're gonna print out two. All right, now we, we print out two. We print it out two, all right, removed it. Now we're gonna add Q's children, two's children, which is four and five to the end of the queue. So we're gonna add four and we're gonna add five, okay? So now, now we add four and five, okay. Now uh, we're gonna get the next value of the queue, which is three, so remove three. And then we're gonna print the value three. So three is gonna be here. So we're gonna print out the value three. So now we have one and then two, three, which is printed out on the value there. Okay, now uh, that's it because uh, three has no children, right? Three has no children, so we're not, we're not gonna add any of its children. All right, so now we're gonna, is the queue empty? It's not empty yet. So we're gonna get the, the next front value of the queue, which is four. So we're gonna remove four, okay? And we'll remove four. We're gonna print four out, so we print four out, and we're gonna get four's children. Um, four's children is null, right? Four, four's children is empty, so there's nothing there. So we're gonna do nothing there. And then, uh, yeah, we're done. We're, we're, at, we're done with that. Five, we're gonna remove five, and then push five. Uh, we're gonna print out five. Yeah, remove five, we're gonna print out five, and print that out. And now we're gonna get five's children. So five's children is nothing, it's empty here, so then, that's it, yeah. It's up there, we, we can't add anything add onto the queue. So now, that's it. Our queue is empty, so now we're done. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Now our output is just this. Value one is one, which is there, which is the first level. Two, three is the next level, from two to three. Right, two, three is the next level. Four, five is the last level, four, five. All right, so yeah, that's that, and that's the code. That's legit the code. You don't have, we don't have to do anything. That was the whole code. And I hope you guys understand this, why this queue is so much easier than recursively calling it. But yeah, you might need to use recursive call to do that. All right, so now that we learned how to do a level order traversal for binary search tree, now we're gonna actually do the problems, okay? So now when I do the problems, we're literally just going to use the pattern that we've learned here and gonna implement in the problem. So it's not that difficult, okay? So yeah. Okay, so the first lead code problem of binary tree level order traversal is exactly what I just explained, all right? I'm gonna use the iterative example because it's so much easier and you don't have to do all this stuff, right? You don't have to do all the, the run that first search, get the height and then loop from one to H and then recursively call on the left side and the right side. Like that's really pain in the butt. To me, it, it's pain in the butt. For this one, we're just gonna use the actual iterative method. And what we're gonna do is literally the same thing as what I explained before. Um, the only difference now is that they want the end result to be in an array, okay? So instead of just printing it out, it'll just be an array. So for that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a 2D vector here, which is represents two return. And every time you go through the level, we need to create a new array and then add the new array into two return. And then in the end, we're gonna return two return. That's all we have to do for this uh, binary tree level order traversal, okay? So um, we start out with the Q with the value here, which is just regular value, okay? Um, this Q, I, you could call this Q anything. I call this Q value. Maybe that wasn't a good way to call it, but it is it is there, it is there though, right? right? Um, then we have two return, which is just the 2D vector that we're gonna return, okay? All right, so, um, before we start anything, if the root is not equal to null, so if the root is not empty, right, we're just making sure that the tree is there, right? If it's empty, then, I mean, you don't have to do anything. Literally, you don't have to do anything. But yeah, if it's not, if it's not null, right, so that means it has something, what we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna push back a new array of just the root's value. So if I have three here, right, I'm just gonna create a new array called uh, three that has a value three, and I'm just gonna push it onto the two returns. So I'm gonna add this to my 
array of two returns. So if, if I were to draw it out on paint, it would be something like, so we have a 2D vector that we're gonna return inst instead, right? So this time, the first value is, we're gonna push back the roots value. So it's three. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new array three, and we're just gonna add it onto this vector. So we're just gonna add three into here, right? Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to have for every level, we're gonna add a new array of values for each level into our two, or two return array. That's the only difference in this problem. The only difference is that they want each level to be in a separate array. So that's why we're gonna, for the first node, we're just gonna return a, its separate array inside there and add it into the two return. So that's this part. Now we're gonna run our um, breadth first search, which is very, very easy here. Um, so we're gonna have our queue and we're gonna push this queue. Okay, so our queue is gonna be, I don't know, it's gonna be empty for now. Uh, here we're gonna push the root on. So the root is three, so we're gonna push three. So this is, this is our queue, our line. We're gonna push three, okay? So we push three onto the queue and now we're gonna create a new array. So we're gonna, I called it each, you don't have to call it anything. I just called it each, like each level. You call it level, it'll be each level here. All right, now we're gonna pop the first value of in from our queue. So that's this one, we're gonna pop three out. So we pop three out and what we're gonna do is we're gonna push, um, we're gonna push the left, whatever three's uh, left child into our queue and the right child into our queue. So three's left child is nine, right? So by the way, we have to check if it's not null, right? Because if it's null, it'll just be empty. So three's left child is nine, so we're gonna push nine onto our queue, so if you push that. And then um, three's right child is 20, so we're gonna push that onto the queue, so push that on there. Okay, so now we have nine and 20. And while that, we're gonna add it into our new array, which is just gonna be our new array here. This is our new array, and we're gonna add nine and 20 into here, okay? Now when we're done with that, um, is our new array that we're adding levels into our two return? So this is our this is our two return, right? Our 2D array. Is this empty? Uh, nope. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add it into our 2D vector. So that'll be there. So we add it to there, so that'll be there. And then now we're just gonna get rid of this. So that's gonna be an our 2D vector. So that's nine and 20. And now, yeah, we go back to the top. Uh, we're gonna pop nine out. Okay, pop nine out, and we're gonna get nine's uh, left and right child. So nine's left and right child is empty here, so it's null, so left is null, and right is null, so we do nothing, right? Because if we if there's nothing there, we don't really need to add anything, right? So for that, since it's equal to null, we do nothing here. So that's that, and now we're gonna go back to the top, right? Because our each array, this is our new array for our level, is empty here, so we're gonna go back to the top. So now we're at 20, right? We, we're gonna pop 20, the next value in our queue, and pop it out, and then we're gonna add its children. So what's 20's children? 20's left child is 15, right? And set, uh, right's child is seven. So we're gonna add 15 and seven into our next level. So that'll be that, okay? And then what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna check, uh, we gotta push back 15's uh, child here and 15's children is null on the left side and 15's children on the right side is null also. And also seven's left child is null and seven's right child is null. So that's that, there's that's that. Uh, so we don't add it into our queue, so there's there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, 15, seven, and because it's not null, we're gonna put it here and that's it. That's all we have to do. Easy, right? And now since our queue is empty, all the values are gone, um, that's it, and we just print it out and we return it. So we return to return and we get our output of three, three, nine, 20, 15, and seven. So yeah, that's all we have to do. And that's the first value of this problem. So I hope you guys enjoy this and we're gonna go to the next problem. All right guys, so we're gonna go over another problem using the exact same uh, level order traversal, but this time it's gonna be zigzag. So for zigzag, it's very, very similar of doing the same level. This time we're gonna alternate going from left to right and then right to left. So here, the first value, we're gonna go from left to right. So we're gonna have three and that's gonna be in our value of three here. Then we're gonna go right to left. So we're gonna print out 20 and then nine. So that's right 20 and nine. That's the next value here. And then we're gonna left to right. We're just gonna be 15 and seven. So we're gonna print 15 and seven and put it there. So yeah, that, then we have, that's it. So we have three, 29, 15, seven, and that's the level order of going three, 29, 15, seven. That's it. Um, there's not much 
besides that for here, um, yeah, to do this problem, I think it's the exact same thing. Actually, let me see. Yeah, we just do the literally the exact same thing. But I think the difference is that we got to flip it. We got to flip it every time. So let's actually check. Uh, let's go on one of the solutions. It's very, very similar. The only difference is that I want to go, go to a C++ solution because it's easier to read. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So this is okay. So yeah. Okay. The only difference is that is that every alternate, um, alternate array, what we're going to do is we're going to actually reverse it. So every alternating array, we're going to reverse it and then we're going to print it back. Um, so yeah, let's, I'll, I'll go over this, this value. So this is not that difficult again. So we're going to start this again and we're going to go over the code line by line. It's not, the, see, the problem with these coding interviews value, like once you know the pattern, it's so much easier. Like you don't have to do all this nonsensical stuff. Like once you know the pattern, it is so much easier and you don't have to do all of that. All right. First of all, I'm, um, for him, I don't know why you're doing this way, but okay. Um, all right. So what we're going to do here for him, uh, we're going to have a queue, exactly the same queue here. And what we're going to do is we're going to push the root onto the queue. So the first value of the queue is three. So we're going to push three onto the queue. So we're going to have this and we got three and we're going to push three onto the queue. So push three onto the queue. And while this queue is size is greater than zero, which is the same thing as not empty. Okay. Um, we're going to pop the value of Q. All right. So, oh, if it's null, then don't do anything. I don't know why he did it this way, but anyway, pop the value of the Q. And what we're going to do is we're going to push the left side and the right side. So we're going to push left uh, nine onto the Q. So we push nine onto you and the right side, 20, we push onto Q. So we have that nine, 20. All right. So we're going to push nine and then push 20. Um, yeah. So now values is going to be, uh, values is we're going to push nine. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to push the actual values. So we're going to have a, Remember we have a result array and then we're going to have an individual array for each of the level. All right. So now we're going to push three onto our values array, which is going to be the individual level. And that's that. All right. So here, what they have is that they have a level, a level number here. And the only difference is that this level number is going to tell us like whether we should reverse the value or not. So currently I think level number is going to be zero. If I recall, let me see. Um, where's level? Where are you level? Oh yeah, level zero. So right now we're at level zero. Uh, zero, is it odd? Uh, is it, yeah, is it odd? If it's odd, we're gonna reverse it. If it's even, we're not. Okay, so if it's even, we're not gonna reverse it. So that's that. And then it's not equal to zero. So we're gonna push this onto our array. So yeah, uh, I don't know why they recursively call this. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna push this onto our array. So now we're gonna push three into our array. So that's that. Yeah, and then now we're gonna do the exact same thing. Pop nine out, add into our array nine, get the left child, right child, nothing's there. Null, null, so there's nothing there. Um, there's that. And then we're gonna pop 20 out. We pop 20 out, because it's not empty. And then we're gonna push the children, left child, 15 and seven, so we're gonna push 15 and seven into there. Push those on, uh, put 20 in here. Okay, so now that's going to be our array, 920, and that's that. Then um, what we're going to do is we're going to check is the level now, uh, is it now odd? So before our level counter was zero, right? But what we're doing to do here is we're going to increment our level counter every time, so plus one every time to our next level. So now the level counter is one, and one is odd, so now one is odd. We're going to actually just call this reverse method and reverse all the elements. So now this these values of 29 is going to get reversed. So we're going to now have nine. So this is going to be, instead of 920, it's going to be 29. So that's that, um, that, that. And then we're going to push, increase our level counter, so it'll be two. And then now we're just going to push 29 onto our array here. All right, so we push 29 onto our array here, and then that's that. It's not empty yet, so there's that. We're going to go back to the top. All right, 15, push 15. Push 15 into our new value here and get its children. 15's child is null, null, so we do nothing. 
Um, now we're gonna get seven. Is seven's child is child is null null nothing. So we can remove that. We're gonna add seven into our array of that. Now um, is our level counter odd? So it's too odd. It's not. So we're gonna just leave it here, and then we're gonna push fifteen seven into our array, and then there's that. So then once that's there, that's that. And then if we go back to our output, we get the exact right values. We have three, 29, 29, and we have 15, seven. And these are in its values and it's a zigzag. So we had went here and went this way and then we went that way. So yeah, that's the next value of this problem. I hope you guys enjoy this and we're gonna go over another four problems. Yeah, this is gonna be awesome. All right, guys, so we're gonna do another problem of binary tree traversal two, which is a 107. And this is gonna be exactly very similar. So you're using our tree traversal algorithm using breath first search, but the only difference is that the um, difference is that we're gonna start from the bottom and go to the top. So here they want, instead of going level order of three, nine, 20, 15, seven, right? They wanna do 15, seven, nine, 20, and then three. So in my opinion, what you could do is you could just do the regular traversal of breath first search, and then you could just reverse the array because then when you reverse the array, you just get 15, you just, in the end, you'll have 15, seven, nine, 20, and then three. So that's, that, that's my idea of doing it. But uh, we could look at other people's idea. Um, let's see. We'll, we'll see other people's idea. Okay, so here, other people's idea is a little different. Um, they don't want to use a reverse the end array, which I understand. Oh, actually they did. They did reverse. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, they did reverse. Um, okay. For them, I don't know why they use a clone method. That's so weird. Okay, all right. Well, we'll look at their Java solution and we're going to try to explain how to do their, their idea. But essentially it's very similar and all you have to do is just reverse it. Okay, so we're gonna look at the Java solution. Um, we could actually, let me see if they have a C++ solution because I don't like using clone. Um, I don't know why you would wanna clone this. Um, it must be a C++ solution. Okay, yeah, so this C++ solution is way easier, okay. So level bottom, is exactly the same thing. Um, let me see. Do we have a count? Count Q dot size. We could just do Q is not empty. Um, get the hunt value. Okay, yeah. This this one's much easier. Um, is is it's literally the exact same thing. So let's get a let's get let's get the picture here. Copy it here. So this is our picture, and then we're gonna do the exact same thing here. Um, here's a beginning solution. Okay, so very similar. We're gonna do the exact same algorithm that we did before. The only difference is, is that uh, in the end, we're gonna reverse it. Okay, so is the root empty? Uh, three is not empty, so there's nothing there, so it's just there. Okay, um, we're gonna we're maintain our 2D array of this res, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna have our Q. So this is our Q, our line. We're gonna push the root of it, which is three, so we push three onto it, and then is our queue empty? It's not empty. So what we're gonna do is, I don't know why they're doing it this way, but hey, we could do this way. They're gonna loop from zero to the size of our queue, which is um, three. So zero to the size of queue, three. Okay, we're gonna have to get the first value of our queue, which is three, and we're gonna pop it out. So we're gonna pop it out and then pop it out. And then we're gonna get the three's left child, which is gonna be um, push three's left child, which is nine onto our queue. So we're gonna push that onto our queue, which is over here, nine. And then we're gonna get the right child and push that onto the queue of 20. So the right child of three is 20. So we're gonna push that onto queue. All right, so we have nine and 20, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna push back current's value. All right, so current's value is three. So we're gonna push back three onto um, a vector, a vector V. Okay, so we're gonna create a vector, another array, and we're gonna push three onto it. Okay, so that's that. And then in the end, um, we're gonna push the uh, new array of three into our results. So our, our res is here, our end result here, and we're gonna push three onto it. So now three is gonna go in here and be over there. Okay, so that's that. 
And remember, we're doing exactly the same thing. Okay, now we're gonna go back to the top. Nine, I'll get the first value of nine. We got nine, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create, uh, push nine's children left and right, nine's child left and right, and all, so we do nothing there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna push, uh, create a new vector and push nine onto it. So here, nine vector here. All right, so now we have nine onto there. Okay, so now we have nine onto there, and um, yeah, nine onto there, and then um, yeah, so push nine onto there, and uh, yeah, okay, push nine back there. Okay, now uh, since there's two two values in our count, right? Two values in uh, the size of this. So in what they did, I, I don't know why they did this way, but it's we could do it this way. Okay, so. Since there's two values, we're gonna go back to the top and we're gonna get the next value in our next layer here, which is uh, 20. So we're gonna remove 20 here. And then we're gonna push 20's left and right child. So left and right child is 15, 15. And we're gonna right child is seven, so we're seven. Okay, so now, now we're down here and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna push the, um, push V onto, uh, 20 onto V. So 20, remember 20 here, is onto V, so we're gonna actually push 20 and add it to our array. So 20 is gonna be here, so we're gonna add 20 here. Okay, now that we're done with uh, two of our values here, since there's two values in our queue, right? This for loop of the count is gonna be over, and then we're gonna push the result our array into our result. So we're gonna push nine into our resulting array, which is gonna be 920, and push it here. All right, so now, now that's that, okay? And now we're down here. We have 15, okay, so we have 15. Um, what are we gonna do? So 15, we'll go back to the top. Um, is 15 null? Okay, 15, we'll go back to the top. Okay, so now we have 15, we're going back to the top. Um, we're going to pop 15 out. So we're gonna pop 15 out, pop 15. So 15 is gonna get popped out and we're gonna pass in the children of 15, which is going to be null, null. And there's null, so nothing there, so we're gonna put 15 here, or there. Okay, so that's that. And then we're gonna right side, we're going to pass in seven here, which is gonna be seven. I don't know, right child seven. Uh, pop seven out, pop it out because it's not empty yet. Pop seven out. But, and then we pop seven out and uh, we're gonna push it to children. There's no no children for seven, right? We got nothing here, nothing there. So that's gonna be there. And then um, since we didn't finish our count yet, right? Our count is two more elements left in the array. So after that, uh, we're gonna push uh, seven onto our value of array, uh, 15, seven, and that's gonna go there. And then after that, um, we're done with that, and we're gonna push um, our new array of 15, seven into result. So we're gonna push that there. And then we're gonna close off our array like that because our queue is empty, all right? So now we basically did the same thing of our level traverse as earlier, right? But the key here is that, um, they wanted bottom up instead of of top to bottom, right? So here right now it's bottom, uh, it's top to bottom, right? We have three, then we have 920, 920, right? 15, seven, so that's that. But they want us to go 15, seven, 920, and then three. So the fun fact about that is that in C++ there's a reverse method, so we could just call the reverse on here, and that's just gonna flip everything over. It's gonna reverse the whole thing. So if we reverse the whole thing now, we're gonna have 15, seven first, so 15, seven first. We're gonna have 9, 20 second. And then we're gonna have three last. So that's that, and we're gonna close it off like that. So we have 15, seven, 9, 20, and then three, and that's gonna be it. Okay, that's it. And that's the basically the gist of it. Um, the result, we could go back to the result description um 15 7 9 20 and 3 so that's that so that's all we have to do and then we just return it and that's it so that's how you do this problem i hope you guys understand this solution and yeah we're gonna go to the next problem all right guys we're almost done with this in order successor in bst um basically we're just going to given a, a binary search tree and a node, we're gonna return the smallest key that's just larger than it. So let's say we're at this number one. The smallest key that is just larger than one is two. So that's, we return two here. And let's say we're at six here. 
the smallest key that's large, just larger than six is nothing here because there's there's just nothing here, right? There's nothing, so we just return null. All right, um, yeah. So it's basically the smallest value that's just larger than six. If there was a seven, we could return seven, but there's no seven here. All right, let's just go over the solution. I think you just have to use breadth for a search, if I recall. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. That's it. Huh? So, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. All you have to do is just keep going down. And um, we need to maintain a node called successor. Um, if our current value is greater than or equal to our current root, uh, our, uh, if our current... If the no, if the root that we're searching for, like the node we're searching for, is greater than or equal to the current value, we set the root equal to the right tree. Otherwise, um, we have a variable successor that is going to equal to the root, and then we're going to set roots to the left side, and then we're going to return it. So this isn't this isn't really that hard. So let's say I had like, I don't know. Let's go here. So let's say we had this, right? Oh, that's returns and all that's not there. Okay. So let's say we had this, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to just going to maintain a variable while we're going to keep going down. Uh, I don't know why this, the code is like really easy. I don't know why they're explaining all this junk here. Yeah. Um, so we're going to have a variable called successor. So we're just going to call this like successor, which is a node that's just smaller, just larger than it, but we need to return it. Okay. Um, while the root is not equal to null, so we need to find, so we have two values, the root, which is the, what we're currently at two, and then we need, need the node that we're searching for. So the value that, uh, we want to be in order successor of that node, which is one, we want the value, the key that is just larger than one, the smallest key that is just larger than one. Okay. So in this case it would be two. So. All right, so we have p is equal to one. So we need to find the largest node. <clears throat> so if I were to go back here and say p is equal to one, right? We need to find the largest node, the smallest node, just larger than one. Okay, the smallest node just larger than one. So in this case, it would just be two, right? It would just be two. So the smallest node just larger than one. All right, so. Basically, all you do is just, you just need to keep going down while you maintain the successor. And I thought this, this solution would be way more difficult, but it's actually not that hard. But yeah. All right. Got the root. We start at two. All right. We start at two. Now, um, is one greater than or equal to two? Is one greater than or equal to two? No, it's not. So our successor is going to equal to two. And our root is going to equal to the left side. So we're going to go to the left side of one. So remember, we started at two. Now we're going to go to the left side of one. Okay. Go back to the top. Is root equal to null? Root one is not equal to null. So we're going to be a here. Um, is one greater than or equal to one? So in our case, is one greater than or equal to one? So right now we're here, here. Okay. Is one greater than or equal to one? It is. So root is going to equal to right. So the right side's null. So um, yeah, we're gonna have right null. We'll go back to the top. Uh, root is now equal to null, right? So now we're null, so we just return successor. So successor is two. So basically what we're doing is that we're just going to keep going down through the tree and we're just gonna maintain the variable successor. And any time of the value that we're searching for, is a greater than or equal to the current value, we're gonna go on, on the right side. And then otherwise, we're gonna get the successor, which is the, the we want the smallest value just larger than, uh, the smallest value just larger than the current value, right? So we're gonna have successor is gonna equal to the root, which is our current value. And then we're gonna go on the left side. So yeah. So basically we're just gonna go, like we're gonna search right. And then if it's larger, we'll just keep going right. Um, otherwise, we're gonna go left. And then we're gonna have a variable 
successor to equal to our current node whenever, whenever we go left. So then that way we're gonna have the smallest node that's just larger than it, okay? So yeah, it's just like going right and then making sure you keep going right. And then if it's not larger, we're gonna go left and make sure it's that. So there's that. Um, I hope you guys understand this this solution. It's not that hard. Um, this is more like, this isn't even like breath for search actually, I don't know. But yeah, well, let's go over another problem. All right, the next problem is minimum depth of binary tree, which is just, yeah, it's just find the minimum depth, which is the number of nodes along the shortest path from the root node down to the nearest leaf node. So yeah, it's root node here down to the nearest leaf node. So it would be like three to 15, right? So it's one, two, two, I think. Um, yeah. We're going to do this with depth first search actually, because this is much easier with depth first search. So with depth first search, you're just gonna keep going down until you reach a node and then you do that. Um, it's gonna be similar to how you get the height. So let's do that real quick. Oh, I already got this thing here. All right, um, let's see if I find a C++ solution because yeah, okay. Oh uh, no, this is, yeah, this is Java. I'm gonna look at C++. All right, so um, this is more more confusing. Actually, this is not that bad. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna call depth first search on our tree node. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go return left, recursive we call on the left side and the recursive we call on the right side. So let's recurse. So we have three here, a root, and recursive call left nine, and recursive call right twenty. So uh, calling on the left, we're going back to the top. Uh, recursive call left nine, recursive call right nine. So I have nine, nine's left. There's nothing. Uh, Twenty's left. There's nothing. So both both these will be zero. So it comes back down here. So left is going to be zero. So I think left side. We don't have a branches. Yeah, left is going to be zero. So we're going to have zero here. And then um, right, we're gonna recursively call on the right side. And uh, because the left is already zero here, so it's we're actually gonna not, we don't actually have to evaluate the right side. So it's gonna do that. And then, oh yeah, no, actually never mind. We still have to evaluate the right side. All right, so we're going on the right side here, 20. And then um, we're gonna recursively call on the left and the right. So left side's 15. So we go back to the top, 15. And then recursively call on the left, 15 is left is null. So it's nothing. So we're gonna turn zero. And then um, 15's right is no loss, return zero. So 15's left, right are both zeros. So we're gonna return uh, zero plus zero plus one, so it just become one. So that's this part. And then, um, yeah, so that's, that's the left side. And then we're gonna go on the right side now. So we're gonna go on seven. Seven goes back to the top. Left and right are both zero here. So we're gonna return zero, zero. Uh, yeah, and then the zero, zero plus one, so it becomes plus one. So here we have plus one, plus one. So we have plus one, plus one. So now I have that. Um, so now we have both one, one here. They're not going to do anything here. Um, one, one, so that's nothing here. Yeah, okay. Is left side greater than or equal to right side? Um, yep. So then we're going to actually return the right side. So since we're doing the minimum one, yeah, if the left side is greater than or equal to the right side, we're going to actually return the right side and plus one. So the right side is seven plus one. So uh, seven's right side is plus one. So plus one plus one. So it's going to be plus two. All right. So that returns this side, and then um, it goes back to the top here. And then left is null. No, uh, left is zero. Right is actually left should be one though, right? I feel like left should be one. Something's not right. I think I I, I think I messed this up. Um, let's see, left side go here, left side, left side, left, no, no, zero, zero. Yeah, left side should be one. So this should be plus one here. My bad, I messed that up. Okay, so now I have one, two. So now this side is, this side's left is one. Uh, this side's right is two. So when you have that, and that's that. Is left greater than equal to right? Uh, no, it's not. So we're gonna return um, some left plus one. So we're gonna return left side of plus one, plus one, so it's gonna be plus two. So in the end, we're gonna have plus two. So yeah, 
So essentially what they're doing is they're gonna keep recursively calling going down and every time we're going to um, increase one for the number of branches. Um, if they're both zero, we're gonna have plus one. If left side is greater than equal to right side, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually return the smaller one, which is right side plus one. And uh, yeah, otherwise we're gonna return the the other side, left side plus one. So yeah, this is just getting the whatever side is smaller and it's gonna add that and return that. And the reason why we plus one every time is because we're going down the tree every single time. So we're gonna add one. Um, I feel like you could just use minimum here. I don't know why they did it this way. Yeah, but this is a, this is a way to solve the problem. Uh, we're just keep going down all the time. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this, this part and we're gonna go over the next problem. All right. Um, Populating next right pointers in each node. Um, this question is going to be exactly the same thing. We're going to give it a binary search tree, but this time we're going to add a new pointer. And this new pointer is going to point to whatever's on the right side. So we have one. We want to create a new binary search tree where whichever node node is we're going to point it to null and it's going to point to whatever's on the right side. So one is going to point on the right side, and that's that. Two's right side is three, so we're gonna two is gonna point to three, and three is gonna point to null. Four is gonna point to five. Five is gonna point to six. Six is gonna point to seven, and seven is gonna point to null. So, the, so we're given a regular binary search tree, but we want to create something like this, right? Where whichever value we're gonna point it to the whatever's on the right side. So yeah, we just have to make sure they all point to the values on the right side. So I think what we could do is do the same thing as an inner order traversal, and just have to make sure we set all the nodes properly. Um, yeah, level order traversal. So yeah, so we're gonna do a level order traversal, but this time we're gonna mark it and set its value in properly. Um, let's just go over the code right real quick. Okay, so it's, it's not that hard. Uh, we could even go over the Java code. All right, um, very, very exactly similar to what we have before. Just make sure that we actually do this properly. All right, so we want to create something like this on the on the right side, but let's actually just get rid of this for now. So we want to create something like this, but let's have some space. All right, so let's go to the editorial. All right, so um. We add one to the value of our Q, so our Q is this, and we're gonna add one to it, all right? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the size of the Q and we're gonna loop through all the levels. Um, the reason why we're doing this, this for loop is just because if the number of children isn't two, right? But our size is always gonna be two because it's a binary search tree. If it was like an N area tree, then yeah, this would make sense. But yeah, this is why we have it. All right, pop the value on the front of the Q, so we pop one. Um, if it's less than the size, oh yeah. All right, pop the value on the next, pop one. Um, if we're not at the last value, right? If we're not at the last value, we don't want to have like bad connections. So if our, I is, if our current like node number is smaller than the last value, then we need to set the next pointer pointing to whichever is there. Okay, so one's next is going to point to Whichever is on the front of our Q. So our, our value on the front of Q is null. So one's pointer is going to point to null. One pointer next is going to point to null. All right. So that's that. Um, then we need to add the two children. So add two and three. So we have that. It goes back to the top. Pop two out of the stack. Uh, not stack. Out of the Q. And um, two. Oh, yeah. Out of the Q is two's, le is two's uh, pointer is... Is our current i not uh, smaller than the last value of our size, right? We make sure that we have to at least have uh, two nodes in order to connect them. Um, so if it is, so i, so right now i is one, right? I is smaller than size minus one, which is like, uh, yeah. So two is uh, i is one is smaller than two minus one. Uh, if zero is still smaller than two minus one. Okay, so we do that. Um, two's next is going to point to the top of our q, which is three. So two's next, two is gonna point to three. Okay, so then two points to three. Um, we're gonna add the children of two, so we're gonna add four and five. And that's that. Um, get the next value, we'll go to the top, pop three out of the stack. 
uh, out of the queue, my bad, out of the queue, push um, the two little children, six and seven, right? Three's children is six and seven, so we push those onto the queue. Um, is our value of uh, zero, one, two, three, zero, is, is it smaller than the size of it? Yes, it is. So we're gonna set uh, four's value. So yeah, um, yeah, is it smaller than it? Yeah, so out of four's value, remove it, right? And then we're gonna add, um, four's value is gonna point to the first value on the right side, which is five, so we're gonna point it to five. I think three, we have to point to null, but I think originally they said everything points to null originally, so I think, I think all these are originally set to null anyway. So that's a good part. Um, yeah, so we four, four is always gonna point to five. Um, remove five from the stack now. So we pop five from the stack, add its children, five's children is null, so we don't need to add any of that. Um, yeah, five's children is null, we don't have any of that. So then we remove those, um, pop six, Oh yeah, five size, uh, our current iteration is um, not to the end yet. It's not to the end yet. So six is not to the, not, our current value is still smaller than size minus one. So we're gonna point uh, five, point to the next value of the top of our queue, which is six. So five is gonna point to the next value of six. Go back to the top, remove six from the queue. Push six is uh, children's null null, so that's gonna be nothing there. Um, after that, nothing's gonna be there, right? Um, remove seven from the queue, so we move, remove seven from the queue. Um, is six smaller than the size minus one? Yes, it is. We're gonna point six, six is node, point to seven next, point to seven. Um, we go back to the top, seven, and yeah, add seven's children, seven children is null, so we do nothing there. Go back to the top. Um, yeah, our queue is empty now, and then that's it. So here we're gonna. This is gonna be null because like all the values are originally set to null. Um, this check is important because we don't want to establish any wrong connection. The queue would contain two nodes at a level at most any time in the time. This ensures that we don't establish next pointers beyond the end of the level. So yeah, this is this check is just make sure making sure that we go don't don't establish any value to the next of the level. So we don't go beyond the size of this level. So yeah. That's the gist of this code. Um, then we return the root, which is gonna be one's root, and that's it. Yeah, so we don't have to do anything for this. Um, there's not much to do here. I hope you guys enjoy this problem, and then we're gonna do one last problem, and then that's it. Um, then I'm going to render it, and then I hope you guys enjoy this video. All right, so we're gonna go on the next value of the tree. So, <laughs> binary tree right side view. We're gonna do binary tree right side view, okay? So given the root of a binary tree, imagine we're standing on the right side of it, and then we're just gonna see from top to bottom. So if, our, if we're just standing right here, let's say I'm just right here, I'm gonna see all the values from top to bottom. So one, three, and four. That's what we're gonna do. All right, so how do we do this? It's not that hard. Um, it's really not that hard. Uh, yeah, I'm, you, you, it's, it's the, these problems are not that difficult once you understand the, the pattern of it. But it's probably a, you could use breath for search or depth for search. Let's just keep all the going down. Q by type, level size measurements. Actually, I think DFS is the easiest one here. Um, do we want to use breath for search? All right, well, we'll use breath for search because this is a breath for search problem. All right, all right, um, very similar, same thing. Start at the root, one, we're gonna have our queue right here, one, add one to the queue. All right, so we added one to the queue. All right, is our queue empty? It is, we're gonna get the level length, which is uh, the size of the queue, uh, it's just one. So we're gonna do that, loop from zero to the one size of queue. Get the first value of the queue, so we remove one. Um, if it's equal to level minus one, so if we're on the rightmost element, so level is one, uh, level length is one right now, so one minus one is zero, so i is equal to zero, so we're gonna add this to our right side. So we're gonna have an array of right side, which is gonna be this, b1, add that there. Um, yeah, add that there, and then we're add the children, 
add the child nodes as the queue. So we add two and three. So we add two and then we're gonna add three. So we add two and three there. And then now um, we're going to check is the queue empty. So the level to length is two now because we have two nodes now in the queue. So we're gonna loop from zero to two. And um, yeah, we're gonna get the top value of our two uh, of our queue. So we move two from it. And then we're gonna add, um, yeah, we need to check is two the rightmost element. So I is gonna equal to zero, is zero less than two? It is. Um, is uh is zero equal to two minus one so two minus one is one right is zero equal to one nope so two is not the rightmost element so we do nothing there we don't add it but we still need to add the children of two so we're going to add left and right child two's left child is null so we don't add it two's right child is five so we're going to add five to our q bam we're at there then um we're going to go back to the top of this and yeah, we're gonna go back to the top of this and then um, we're gonna check, uh, remove three, the topmost value of our Q, so it would be three. Three gets removed. Three gets removed, we're gonna check if uh, three is equal to the uh, size of our Q, so if it's the rightmost element. The size of our Q is two values right now, so is zero equal to uh, two minus one, one? Actually, no. Our size of our Q is two is size of our Q is two. Wait. Yeah. 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 Okay. Our size of our Q is three. Um, do we add? Oh, we didn't add five. Okay. We were supposed to add five afterwards. Something's not right. I don't know. Okay. So we're at three, right? Three is I equal to rightmost element. Um, it's, this is supposed to be the rightmost element. I is supposed to be, oh, it's pre-increment plus plus one. So yeah, um, is one equal to uh, length, length two, two minus one, one. Yeah, it is. So we're gonna add three to our rightmost element. So it's gonna be, three is gonna get added to here into right side. Uh, right side is, oh, right side is just a list. Okay, so we're actually returning a single list. So we're returning a single list. So we're gonna add, Three is gonna get added right here. All right, so we did that. Um, three's child is four, so we're gonna add four to the queue. And yeah, we go back to the top five, remove five from the queue. Five's left is, uh, is one equal to two minus one, uh, is zero equal to two minus one, nope. So we don't add five to, the, to our queues, right? So we're gonna remove that. Um, yeah, and then we're gonna add left and right. There's no null, so we'll do that. Um, four goes back, uh, we go back to the top here. Um, our size of our level now is, I think our size of our level is still two, right? Um, yeah, size of our level, oh no, it's one. It's one, zero, zero, uh, we go zero here. And then um, I is equal to level minus one. So are we at the rightmost element? of level minus one. Um, so we are now, we're at the rightmost element of four. So we're gonna add four to the right side. So it's gonna add four here. And then we're going to remove it. Uh, so this pull is supposed to remove it. So yeah, four is gone. Add the two children, there's nothing on there. And then after that, we just have the right side of one, three, four. So then we just return this one, three, and four. So yeah, that's the gist of it. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this video. That was very quick uh, breath first search. Uh, the right side, um, to check the rightmost element, that is what you do. Uh, I had like, I think I messed up a little bit on doing the counting, but yeah, it's not it's not that bad. It's the right, the last node is on the level size minus one, then you could push it onto it. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.